Welcome to the second episode of the Breeders' Cup Challenge Rundown Show. The show that brings you up to date with all the action leading up to the championships at Keeneland in November. It's been a month of world-class racing, including the world's best racehorse. So let's jump straight in. I'm Rosie Tapner and welcome to Goodwood House, the home of glorious Goodwood and what a setting for our second episode. This month's action had started with the Stephen Foster Stakes at Churchill Downs and ended with the Bing Crosby at Delmar. But where better to start than right back here in England with the one, the only, Baid. This is where Baid was stable just before he made it nine wins from nine races in the Qatar Sussex Stakes. The son of See the Stars, who also literally won everything, and the full brother to Hookham, who's also had Group 1 success, I mean, what an overachieving family, is making headlines across the world for his stellar performances. Horses like this really do not come around this often, so I caught up with his pilot, jockey Jim Crowley, who's ridden him in all five Group 1 wins. He just seems to have everything. He's got a great mind. I've never known a horse with a mind like it in my life. Even after the race, he's so relaxed. Before and after the race, he just takes it all in his stride. A scintillating winner. Baid is unbeaten. And it's night from night. Baid and a canter. Well, to ride a horse like Baid, it's a, it's a great privilege. It's an honor. I suppose it comes with a lot of responsibility now as well. Obviously, he's, he's nine from nine. The public have really got behind him. And like I said, it's a great honor and privilege to ride him in such a talented horse. Well, I think, I think pressure's good, how you deal with it. People deal with it in different ways. I quite enjoy pressure. I think as, as time's gone on, his, his winning sequence has got bigger, then uh, obviously the pressure increases a little bit more. But look, I believe in the horse. I, I know what he's capable of. So you go into the race and you try and do your homework as much as you can, and, and then it's let everything unfold. Well, actually, as soon as, as soon as we came out the stalls and we got a good position and I could follow Order of Australia, and I, I could just envisage how the race would pan out then. And, you know, obviously Goodwood's a tricky track. Baid on the extreme right, cruising at the moment, as you might expect. Modern Games under pressure at the cutaway. Alcohol free, exploring a run on the far side. Bathrat Leon uh, just gains a little bit of momentum there from the cutaway. Leads by two lengths, chased by Modern Games. And here is Baid now, asked the big question on the outside. Baid cutting them back. Modern and games putting up a fight, but by it oh, all, this horse has got gears that other horses do not possess, and it's night from night by Eden a canter. There's always been a lot of hard luck stories, and although this week they've had the false rail, it's still small fields can sometimes be tactical, but I was never really in any worry about how the race would pan out. The most important thing with any horse is to get them to relax. So that's the first thing I try and do, get them to relax in a race. And then after that, he just, he comes with a nice smooth run. It's like a, a, a motor car going through the gears. I would never expect him to do anything instantly, but when he hits top gear, he's, he's unbelievable. It's hard to put into words, really. The only way I can describe it is if driving a really, really fast car, and that's the nearest thing I can explain it to. See, the last time I'll ride him will be when it all sinks in, but at the moment, I just want to try and keep that unbeaten record going. So great to hear from Jim, such a fantastic jockey. Now onto a horse that has been probably quite unfairly underestimated throughout his career and yet proved himself in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth stakes at Ascot among a very strong field of horses to secure himself a free ticket into the Longines turf at the Breeders' Cup. I'm talking of Piledriver. Now Piledriver's team are a very small but mighty one and it's so great to see the success they're having with him. Let's Let's go and catch up with his trainer, Willie Muir. People were asking me for pictures at Windsor. Selfies, I said this is the most pictures I've had since I got married. This is unbelievable. Life is just not like this. I know, everybody's still flying. You're going to stay up there. We're going to be up in the clouds for a few weeks. It's not just a day or so. This is something very special for a stable of our. We've had high class horses got close in these type of races, but not. This is a King George Queen Elizabeth. This is one of the most prestigious races in our calendar. and. He blew him apart on the day. Mission of the room, Paul Driver, William Ewan, Chris Grassley, P. Jenner McDonald, a fairy tale winner. As I 
saying I've had all the way since he's had them. I said, he, when he pile drives them, they know they've been pile drives. We're not a big stable, we're a small stable. All the lads were there, everybody was cheering and chatting, and they were all around the back, and I don't know how many bottles of champagne we drank. I didn't drink, I don't drink, but they did. And the next morning, I'm laying in bed about 4.30, I thought, I'm getting up, I can't stay here. So the lads come in about 8 o'clock, and I'd been up and done loads. I'd had him and the other horse had been out and done their exercise, and I'd mucked them out and cleaned the horse box and cleaned me tack. So just a normal day, but yeah, what? It's just because you're so excited and everything's fantastic. This game is really tough for small people, and the only way you survive is working. Some days we've got everybody in the yard, the secretary, my wife, my daughter, everybody pitches in to help because when they go on holiday, we have to. I was just speaking to the handicapper and they said we're the top rated mile and a half horse in Europe. So why not the Ark? I mean, the horse that won the Ark last year was second two and three quarter lengths behind us, so why not the Ark? It's a, it's a race that's always steeped in history and, and prestige and we'd love to be there to, to go there. If you go perfect placing, you probably think Breeders' Cup is probably the one that is the right position after the Ark, and then Hong Kong. I mean, I know the Japan Jolly Club are trying us to go there, and, and it is very good. We get down, we graft. My dear old dad's left us, he's gone, but when, before he died, he said, son, I won't leave you any money, but I'll leave you the best legacy man I'll have. You'll know how to work. And he made it, he taught us to work, and that's what we do, we work. Well, it just shows the value of hard work and some fantastic achievements over the years from Willie Muir. Now, from one of the smallest stables to have had a Challenge Series race to one of the leading ones in the world, John Gosden started his career in California and was at the very first Breeders' Cup way back when in 1984. Royal Heroine was the US female champion turf horse and Gosden saddled her all those years ago. <laughs> Hollywood Park, Inglewood, California, it's for the inaugural Breeders' Cup, the biggest day in thoroughbred racing history. It was obviously at Hollywood Park, which is now a fantastic football stadium. But then, you know, racing was big. You could get crowds of 50, 60, 70,000. And actually, so many turned up for the inaugural Breeders' Cup that we, we ran out of programs. And I remember if you were waiting for your lunch, you had bread rolls till about the fourth race. They were overwhelmed with the numbers. It was a great occasion, you know, the inaugural Breeders' Cup. Great racing, and obviously we were in the mile with the Royal Heron, who became an Eclipse Award winning filly herself, and broke the American and the world record for the mile. So it was what you call exciting. And they're off. They're coming to the final 16th of the mile. Royal Heron sweeping to the lead. a hugely successful concept and obviously it was a one-day meeting then it's gone to the two-day meeting and it, there's no doubt it gives a great finale to the season I mean it becomes our Super Bowl if you like rather than the season just slightly the racing year just sort of disappearing We've had four Challenge Series races in America, starting with the Stephen Foster. 100 yards to go, Olympiad, with those powerful strides, flourishes in the Foster. And she's out in the center and on to take a clear lead. Spirit Wind is back to second, Make Mischief and Glass Ceiling are next, but with an eighth of a mile to go, she's back in South Florida and on her way back to the Breeders' Cup. Here's Cece in front. She won by six. Cyberknife takes the lead. Cable going with him. These two in a thriller. Cyberknife just in front. And Cyberknife has won the TVG.com Haskell. Full flight for the wire. I do believe the rider just dropped his stick, but it's not making any difference. American Theorem striding home strongly. Get her number is now chasing from second. American Theorem and Joe Bravo have won the Bing Crosby.
As you already know, Bayid has secured his place in the Fan Jewel Mile thanks to his win in the Queen Anne Stakes at Royal Ascot. Since he already won a free berth to the Breeders' Cup, he does not receive a travel allowance by winning a second. Pile Driver goes into the Longines turf and looks like he could be facing a very stiff test. Cece has punched her ticket and a chance to defend her title in the Philly and Mare Sprint. American Theorem, son of Breeders' Cup Classic champion American Pharaoh, has scooped the first spot in the sprint. And finally, we've had two more horses qualify for automatic entry into the Breeders' Cup Classic, Cyberknife and Olympiad. Well, that's it. Huge congratulations to all those who have secured themselves a ticket into the Breeders' Cup. We have so much to look forward to in August with 12 Challenge Series races, including the Judmont International at York, which is a win and your in race for the Classic. Thank you so much for joining me this month. Don't forget you can find all the information on the website and you can come back again this time next month where I'll update you on all the action.